And then Amanga does really well to find Crossdale, who skates in for a debut try. There's few things better to watch in rugby than a strike play. But what I love even more is when players adapt and find clever ways to beat a defence when things don't quite go to plan. So we're going to look at two Ali Crossdale tries for Wasps in their 44 points to 8 win over Bristol. And how the same play, a tunnel ball, was used in different ways to unlock the Bristol defence. Crossdale's first score starts with a 6 plus 1 line out in the Bristol 22. And the entire setup is designed to condense the Bristol defence while still keeping an element of doubt. With Crossdale and Bassett on the edge. Wasps cleverly go for a mall option with new man Elliot Stook heading the drive. The aim here is to commit the Bristol pack, leaving only Cape on defending narrow. And as soon as the mall loses momentum, Wasps hooker Cruz plays scrum half, which gives Wasps an extra attacker, with Dan Robson now in the first receiver position. So let's look at the strike play itself. Robson has Watson and Le Bourgeois as his flat line options. Notice Le Bourgeois is stood ahead of Watson, so that Robson has a clear path to pass to both receivers, but also as a tunnel to pass through, to hit Jacob Umanga, who then have Fakitoa running a short or lead line. Now the play initially achieves the desired outcome, by getting the inside Bristol defence to chase hard on the two flat line wasp runners, but because Le Bourgeois was stood so flat, he does very little to commit Leua, which enables him to push on Umanga, who again has little option, as Fakitoa is so flat and the Bristol press is so aggressive. But this is where the quality of adaptability comes in. Just look at Fekitoa's leg drive and desire to get outside of the Bristol press. And then to get his hands free and shift the ball onto Umanga by any means. And then a loose tackle from Adji Loken and a faulty gamble from Callum Sheedy opens the door for Crossdale to firmly make his mark on the Premiership. And it wasn't long before the same tunnel play was used, but in a completely different context for Crossdale's second try. After benefiting from a lovely 50-22 from Umanga and a penalty at the ensuing lineout, Wasps were keen to go for broke, particularly as Captain Shields was due back on off the naughty step. Wasps again go for a 6 plus 1 lineout option, but just look at this from Bristol. Four forwards, all set to split the front three from the Wasps mall, which completely halts their effort and eventually forces Wasps to move the ball. But a clear understanding of their attack structure means that both Fafita and Shields work around the corner and are on hand to shift the point of attack. And Shields does a grand job of jumping out, lowering his body height and keeping his feet moving, also helped by Fafita's latch. This close to the line, Wasps continue with their forward-driven, direct approach, using the folding line-out forwards to punch into the Bristol defence. Notice that while this is going on, on both wings, Watson and Bassett hold the touch lines, waiting for an opportunity while Crossdale hangs behind the ruck so he can go either way. And here's where teams like Wasps can sparkle. Instead of persisting with the same pattern, Tom Willis picks against the grain, much to the surprise of his teammates. But look how quickly Crews, Stook, Robson and Crossdale get into shape to run the tunnel ball. Robson Scoot commits Jan Thomas. Stook forces Cape on to bite and Cruz brings in Andy Uren, leaving Crossdale with a not so small task of stepping Johan Lloyd, whose turn shoulders and hips made it impossible to react. Two very different situations making use of a well run tunnel play. If you're a coach, a player, or a rugby enthusiast, I'd love to hear your thoughts and questions in the comment section. And don't forget to hit the like button to help the channel grow. Until next time.